once you get a relationship with a cinematographer, it's the most important relationship a director has. Yeah. And the one thing that I don't need, I don't want to do, is to have 20 minute conversation on every single shot. Oh no. The wonderful thing is, is, is to, it's, it's the shorthand. You yeah. just you go like that. Dun, dun, yeah, that's done. right. Yeah, no absolutely. problem. Exactly. No, the, yeah. the, you're actually completely on the same wa wavelength because uh, you know in the end you know we're all we're all strong individuals and the last thing you you know and it's very precious time, isn't it, on a film set? And oh, absolutely. Every minute matters. Well, I think a cinematographer really is the director's visual right hand man in conjunction with the art director and the. Um, I mean, it's up to you, I think, to... You're the one who finds locations and, and uh, discusses costume we should do. You should be involved in all that with sets and everything else because no good than building sets. They don't build them much now, but building sets if you can't light them, if there's no way to put lights. I don't consider it a technical job at all. I mean, if, for instance, you know, that I think that the cinematographer's job is to read the script, then meet with the director, and then listen to what the director has to say and then read his mind to see because if the director is worth his salt he's already photographed that film in his mind so the cinematographer has then got to read his mind and if that's the way he sees it as well then, he, then he's got to do the picture if if they're poles apart it's not worthwhile him starting the picture yeah it's true absolutely true but uh, sometimes i'm sure freddie will agree you can get trapped if you get I mean, I think we get rather like a typist doesn't see what they're typing. They do it automatically. We light in the sense we don't analyze mm -hmm. things too much. It's, we get used to it. We know what we can mm -hmm. get from light. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you can be trapped if uh, the director changes his mind, you know. I mean, for instance, if you lit a scene, sometimes you might have a brilliant idea to have a shaft of light in the foreground and the mm -hmm. background completely black. You know, it looks marvelous. And, and you say, yeah to the director, what do you think? And he says, great, I love it, let's do it, fine, and you do it. And then he plays the whole scene in the background, in the dark. The great thing is, to have to, is, is, as a cameraman, like myself on um, Sons and Lovers, is to have a director who doesn't interfere, like you, Jack, you know? Well, I, <laughs> we, I, I, Jack, we discussed the film, and then I don't think we spoke absolutely. to each other for the rest of the movie. So many people have said to me, Jack, how do you get on when, you know, with other cameramen when you've been a cameraman? Don't you sort of worry about the lights? And I tell them the truth, that I never worry about the lights. You worry about the movie. Jack and I were very, very close on the film, as I am with the cameraman. On every picture I made, he becomes my best friend while we're making the film. And we, we stay together, we have dinner together, we eat our meals together, we travel back and forth to the set or to location. Together, I insist the cameraman, cinematography, cinematographer, be with me all the time. Uh, I suppose he had had so much experience, did so many films, that he knew almost as they were rehearsing the shot what the lighting should be. And that's a, that's a great help because uh, making films is largely a question of time. And in the end, the, nothing counts until the camera is turning. How quickly a photographer works has a lot to do with uh, what happens in a movie. Mm. I mean, some of them are so self-indulgent that it's, um, it puts you right to sleep, and also it's not that good. I like it fast. But then again, you know, I mean, look, in the, in the case of you have, uh, there are certain uh, cinematographers that um, uh, want to get you what you want. And they say, you know, listen, that may take me a little longer, but if you really need it, I can get it. And that's also very helpful, especially if the studio is letting you slip a few days without bothering you too much. It's not a theater piece, it's film, and it's got to be on celluloid. It doesn't matter what you do. If it's not on film, it's irrelevant. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, and if you, if you have a bad relationship with a cinematographer, almost always the film is compromised. And it's that important. Because of Taxi Driver's short schedule, I had to design every shot and lay it all out, but actually in drawings. Whereas on Raging Bull, I just did that mainly with the um, fight scenes and some of the riot scenes at the beginning of the picture. But the drawings were all very, very clear, and Chapman uh, was very pleased to see them because he, he, he uh, there was no uh, verbal communication. It was all visual. And um, uh, the other person who was really has been very, very instrumental in, in, in uh, um, literally translating onto screen the image that I've drawn um, and that which I've had in my mind also has been Michael Ballhouse. 
And I think uh, we work the same way. In fact, the first one I did with him was after hours, and we did sometimes 16, 17 setups a day. Now, you, you say, well, that's pretty, that's a lot. But what had happened was that over the period of a few years prior to that, my setup count per day went down to maybe five, six, four, eight, you know, and I had to get back up there somehow. And Bolhaus was able to do that with me on that particular film. And uh, he also memorized the notes and memorized the drawings. So he would remind me of what we were about to get. And sometimes if I was depressed during the day shooting, he'd say, oh, but tonight we get to do the shot where we start in his eyes and we move around and say, oh, you're right. Yeah, that'll be fun. You know, <laughs> but the focus, we have to, oh, yes, absolutely. So that he, he has a kind of enthusiasm um, and a respect for the, um, um, really, it's, it's a way of communicating visually, translating the story through images. And we talk only through the images. Uh, on, on my last film, which was a Vita, which is Darius Conji was a, the cinematographer. He liked to change the stock all the time, you know, and that that meant just a minute before you were about to shoot, you suddenly someone's taking the camera apart and putting on a new magazine. Could be very irritating for me with yeah. regards to my rhythm of having yeah, to work with the sure. actors. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, when I used when I saw the uh, the rushes, the dailies, you know, the uh, the work was wonderful. So. Mm. All I've ever argued for is is uh, is to be open-minded. I always think in Britain sometimes we always think, oh, that's the only way, and it's a certain kind of filmmaking, and only that kind of filmmaking is is valid. And I always think that uh, you know the beauty of cinema is that there are many many ways actually to crack that nut. Yes. And uh, and it changes as people's as the audience's taste changes and you know aesthetics change. As I say, you can you know it, you actually, for instance, you can actually uh, you can shoot a film in black and white a lot cruder than if then it's actually infinitely more difficult to shoot it in color mm. because there's so much else going on yeah and it's uh, to make that aesthetically pleasing is much is much more of a challenge than doing just doing straightforward black and white. Truffaut said about color that the trouble is with color it gives you too much information yes. <laughs> which is true to a certain extent. Mm. Why was Sons and Lovers black and white? Well I decided on black and white because it was to me it was the uh, the right type of uh, atmosphere to have with the, the, the sort of gritty, the coal mines and the poverty and all that, and the period as well. Uh, and I'm glad. I mean, they, uh, the London office were, uh, agreed at once because it was cheaper. Were you glad in the end that it was actually in black and white? Do you think it suited the, the piece? I never like to answer these questions, and I'll tell you why, <laughs> because people are always asking me uh, why did you do, yeah, Elephant Man? Yeah. Why at that time in when everybody was shooting films in colour did we not do it in colour? And weren't you glad you did it in black and white because it helped with the atmosphere? And I said it was fine, but this was a, a, a financial decision made by Mel Brooks because it, that, it, in those days it was more expensive to shoot in colour. But I, I'd like to make the film again in colour because I think I could make it look just as realistic. Mm -hmm. I, I can take a camera and go on a 57th Street here in Park Avenue. I can say, let's shoot this way, and we're going to pan this way, and the whole city's going to go sideways right up the block. Um, when I get to the desert, it's like, uh, well, where do you want to start the, uh, the caravan? Well, I said, well, from left to right, we should be low. Uh-huh. Well, there's several mountains there, and there's, oh, there's some trees there. Wait, there's a gully there. Well, let's see. Okay. I mean, it's very hard for me to set the frame, you know, and I found this even in the desert in... Uh, uh, casino where De Niro and Pesci uh, had their private meeting in the middle of the desert outside Las Vegas. And so that um, people like Hathaway and, and uh, people like uh, Jack, you know, go out there and say the camera's here. The, the, the type of directors that I worked with were in, in the main very nice to work with. Very, very few of them dictated anything to do with the lighting. I mean the old fashioned, if you like, director would say I'd like you to get a little feeling of poverty here, Jack. I don't know how you do it, but that's what I'd like you to do. Leaving it to me, you know, fine. But modern directors, which I haven't had the problem of, of working with, I mean, I, I know, but they, I know they say to a cameraman, I want you to use a certain type of lens and I want a three-quarter backlight here and then come around here and zoom and then I want you to put a top light here. And they do dictate exactly the sort of tape because they've been to film schools and they've looked at all the films and uh, they know they know exactly what they want mm. so I'm glad I've escaped that. <laughs> you do have a whole generation uh, probably more 
you know, they're more cine literate, whatever the phrase is. They're, 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 they worry too much about that, I think. Yes, exactly. You know, and, and there was, in the end, the most important thing the director has to do is to tell the story, actually work yeah. with the actors, and, yeah. and, and, get and everyone on gets hung up on how you, how do you... Technique, how does it is. Every young filmmaker always says to me, how did you shoot that? Did you shoot that? What lens? And you go, well, yeah, why are you yeah, interested yeah. in that side of it? Because that actually should be taken care of. You know, that's not really necessarily the director's main responsibility. Yes, that's very true. I do go through the process of saying, okay, I've got four or five choices here, maybe more. And what did I have in my original, original mind here? What did I have originally the thought? And I try to get the best, and I really help, in a case, as you say, the DP, you know, helping me, saying this, may, this gives us more depth or more, uh, uh, more of a sense of epic, uh, but do I need it? In, in rather harsh terms, a cameraman has to be a servant of the director in the sense that cameraman may have all kinds of wonderful creative ideas but the director would say this is what we have to do and this is how we have to do it. One day the clouds were going over so fast and the light was going in and out and in and out. He said I can't shoot because the light's changing and the director said it's a lovely effect. The cameraman said I can't shoot this, the light's going up and down. The, the director said I, I'd like to shoot it, I must. So the director, the, so the cameraman said all right and on the number board he, he put down shot under protest and he won the award <laughs> and that's that's show business <laughs>